Now let's look at the double tuned circuit. As you can see, the double tuned circuit is called as a double tune because here we are having an additional capacitor, a tuning capacitor at the primary side with a capacitor in the secondary side. So both the sides are tuned both the primary as well as the secondary is having an LC tank circuit here and what our aim is to find out that when we are giving a voltage V1 will it amplify and appear at this point where we take out the voltage V2. So based on the dot convention if we are going to redraw the circuit we will get it in this form and considering that this is current I1 and here in this it is current I2 I can write the KVL equation so you know that when we write the KVL equation it is important to mark the polarity based on the direction of current and based on that when I am going to write the KVL equation for this first loop or the primary loop then I will get the equation finally as equation number one that is given here. Similarly in the second equation the second uh, side or the secondary side we will have current I2 passing through the circuit so the polarity will be plus minus plus minus plus minus as we have shown here and then based on that we will have uh, a KVL equation written which can be finally summarized to equation number 2 here. Just like we did we will follow the same steps that we have done in single tune circuit. So from here we can find out what is the value of I1 as you can see from here directly we can say that I1 is going to be equal to uh, R2 plus J omega square L2 C2 minus 1 divided by omega C2 uh, into I2 divided by J omega M. So this is the equation for I1. Now if this equation of I1 is getting resubstituted to equation 1, then I will get a new equation for equation of 1 for V1. So I will write that equation here. Let me use a different color. Uh, so let's say I will get now substituting uh, and substituting substituting uh, in equation 1 and substituting in equation 1 so therefore I will get the equation of V1 as so instead of this I2 sorry this I1 we are going to substitute this so the whole equation will be with respect to I2 so I will take I2 commonly outside let me do that first and then we are having basically the multiplication of R2 plus J omega square L2 C2 minus 1 divided by omega C2 uh, multiplied with this whole is multiplied with this equation which is R1 so R1 plus J same omega square L1 C1 minus 1 divided by omega C1 then we are having minus J omega M and here we are having in the denominator J omega M so cross multiplying that we will be getting plus omega square M square so this is going to be my equation for V1 so if we know the equation of V1 sorry if we know the equation of I2 then we will be able to find out the rest of the current here here I have to mention this is J omega L2 and this is J omega L1 okay so <clears throat> from this one I will get the current I2 as V1 divided by this whole portion I can write here as a curved, curved brackets R2 plus J omega square L2 C2 minus 1 divided by omega C2 
multiplied with R1 plus J omega square L1 C1 minus 1 divided by omega C1 plus omega square M square. So this is the equation of I2. Then we can obtain the equation directly of the voltage V2 because V2 is basically this multiplied with the current I2 that is flowing through that capacitor. So I can write then V2 will be equal to I2 into minus J 1 by omega C2. Now let me take it in a fresh page. But before that I think I made a small error here the denominator part I have forgotten to write which is J omega M so based on this I can write in fresh so we have numbered the equations 3 and 4 for V1 I2 now for finding out V2 we can directly say that it is the multiplication of I2 with the element minus J omega c2 to give us v2 so if i'm going to multiply omega c2 then omega omega will get cancelled j multiplied with minus j will give me plus one c2 will only remain so i can write straight away m v1 divided by this whole portion as such will come so let me straight away take that because that is what is going to be coming all together so I will just write that here so that whole equation is basically here once again the denominator part is as such repeated but there is a difference the difference is that we are now going to have a C2 value C2 value so multiplied with C2 so the equation remains almost the same with only an addition of C2 value at the denominator. So these are my three equations. So as you can see, we have directly obtained the main required equations. Now what is required is the amplification. And as you can see, amplification is basically output voltage V2 by V1, which directly we will get from equation number five because we are having V2 here, we are having V1 here. So directly it will be m divided by c2 multiplied with the remaining portion let me put it again uh, directly we will copy it of what we have written previously so let's see okay so now we are having the equation as such written for the amplification part so as you can see it is almost similar uh, to the previous equations that we have done for single tuned. Now when we are going to have resonance what is going to be the effect that is what is to be mainly understood. Now there are going to be two resonant frequencies one is at the primary side and the other one is at the secondary side. So at the primary side it will be the resonant frequency will be under root of omega L1 C1 whereas at the secondary side the resonant frequency will be under root of L2 C2. Now what we require for this amplifier to work or this double tuned circuit to work is that both of them should be equal and that is going to be our resonant frequency. So at resonance at resonance we will N -A -N -C -E. okay at resonance we will have the equation to be basically given by this and by substituting this directly into this equation what are we going to get so let's say substituting then substituting substituting this in equation 3, 4, 5 as well as 
6. Um, so let's not take 3, we'll take 4, 5 and 6. So let me take, let me correct that. We will take 4, 5 and 6 because that are the output. Voltage, current and the amplification, that is the output. So, so 4, 5, 6. So what we will have, let's take one by one. So if I'm going to put this here, as you can see previously itself, I told you that suppose if I'm going to have omega square L2 C2 minus one divided by omega C2, then if I'm going to substitute this value of omega here, that is omega naught square, you can see that this will turn out to be one minus one divided by omega naught C2. Uh, and that will turn out to be zero. So we will use the same concept. We will use that that this becomes zero at resonance. So based on that, we will get basically that our I2 becomes J omega naught m v1 divided by. So here this imaginary portion this much goes zero this also goes zero so what we are having is only r1 into r2 plus omega naught square m square so this is what is going to be my i2 i will take out the imaginary portion because when we are going to take the magnitude the imaginary portion does not matter so i2 we will straight away write it's just that j produces a additional uh, phase the shift of 90 degrees so it does not matter i will straight away write the value of i2 then v2 what will we get v2 when we substitute this so similar to that what we have seen previously uh, we will substitute instead of this one zero instead of this one also it will come out to be zero so if that is done you can clearly see that here also we will have uh, m v1 divided by c2 okay c2 we will have r1 r2 multiplied then plus omega naught square m square so this gives us this gives us the equation for v2 let me name this so this was your equation 6 this was your equation 7 this is your equation 8 okay so this was your equation 6 uh, so now we have got the current the voltage and we can get the amplification by substituting similarly here we will get m by c2 uh, r1 r2 plus omega naught square m square so we have got the value of amplification also. So now based on this, as we have done uh, previously for the case of single tune, we will find out at what value of M will the amplification be the most. We will do that in a fresh page. So we know that for maximum amplification, for maximum amplification, maximum amplification, we know that we use the minima maxima condition which is that the differentiation of a with respect to m that should be equal to zero now what is the differentiation with respect to m so we will get c2 the denominator part c2 r1 r2 plus omega naught square m square into differentiation of m which is going to be equal to one minus m into the differentiation of this one with respect to m where you can directly see it is going to be two times c2 omega naught square m multiplied with m it becomes m square again divided by the denominator square so it is going to be c2 r1 r2 plus omega naught square m square and the whole square this should be equal to zero so the denominator does not matter what matters is the numerator 
from the numerator we will get c2 r1 r2 plus c2 omega naught square m square minus 2 c2 omega naught square m square is equal to 0 where you can see this one cancels out once with this one so just like in the case of r1 r2 we are going to have the value of m is going to be equal to under root of r1 r2 divided by omega naught again this is going to be called as the critical value of mutual inductance critical value of mutual inductance and based on this critical value we can find out what is the maximum value that can be obtained for i2 v2 and also a so let me start uh, then then i2 max would be when i am going to substitute this one here you can see when i am going to substitute instead of m this value uh, the critical value of mutual inductance omega naught omega naught will cancel off so we will get straight away under root of r1 r2 v1 divided by again if i am going to substitute this one here i am going to get two times an r1 r2 which basically gives me v1 divided by 2 under root r1 r2 so that is my equation number 10 similarly v2 max will be by substituting the critical value of m here so if i'm going to substitute i will basically get uh, the omega naught will not cancel off this time i will get under root of r1 r2 v1 divided by omega naught c2 omega naught c2 and within the bracket we will have two times r1 r2 which will give me the equation v1 divided by two times omega naught c2 under root of r1 r2 this is going to be my equation number 11 similarly the a the amplification the maximum value of amplification that i will get is going to be by substituting the critical value of mutual inductance in equation number nine i will directly get i will straight away i will write uh, sorry uh, straight away i will write the answer one divided by two omega naught c2 under root of r1 r2 this is my 12th equation so what we are having is we are having the amplification that is given by the um, double tuned circuit just as in the case of single tuned circuit we had an equation here also we had a having an equation so always remember single tuned and double tuned circuit uh, derivations are written in the syllabus